Hi, my name's Dan Bennett and I'm reviews editor of Focus magazine and today we're looking at the Tesla Model S ahead of its launch in Britain this summer. So from the outside, the Tesla Model S just looks like any other sports car, but it's when you take a closer look at the small details that you start to notice that things are a bit different. So here, we've got a glass panel where the radiator would be. Of course, being electric and using batteries, it doesn't need to suck air through the engine to cool it down. Uh, this means that actually this is one of the most aerodynamic cars you can buy today. And on a similar note, the batteries actually are on a tray that lines the bottom of the car. And that means the bottom is entirely flat, again, making it more dynamic on the motorways and actually helping you get more out of those batteries. And again, the same is from the side. It looks less like a normal sports car until you get to the driver's seat's handles, which pop out as you approach. The inside of the Model S is very different to your standard car and definitely the first thing you notice is this massive screen here in the central console. Um, as you can see right now I've got the camera that uh, projects out the, the rear boot um, looking at uh, what's behind us and the sat nav. Um, this is actually just a straight sort of rip of uh, Google Maps. Um, and you can see here, it's pretty much just like using a smartphone. You can navigate around, zoom in. Um, there's a pretty noisy satellite view. So if I want it simplified, I just use the map view. Uh, and this is great for sort of if you're lost and want to quickly find out where you are. I found this massively useful, um, although it's not so good for direction itself, but the car does provide turn by turn navigation through the dashboard. What's really exciting is how you can sort of customize these menus to exactly what you want. So you can browse the web just like you would on your smartphone. And then if I want to check how I've been driving, whether I've been driving efficiently and extending the range, I can bring the energy chart down here. It shows you how you've been using the car over the last 30 miles. It's on another planet in terms of how intuitive and smart this is compared to other clever cars I've tested. Okay, so we've seen all the sort of fun things you can do with some of the Tesla smart features, but where it gets really good is in the actual controls. So here on the menu, um, we've got all the different parts of the car. So this is quite a nice little uh, trick is opening the sunroof. So it's a typical British spring day, so I only want 53% of the sunroof open and you can see it glides open exactly 53%. Here you see the app screen. So the people at Tesla tell me they've got just six apps at the moment, but they're hoping to open it up to developers and actually bring in more useful apps. So for instance, you could have an app that just finds you the nearest restaurant, or you could have another app that shows you scenic driving routes. These all can be updated as the car um, ages remotely. So for instance, yesterday I was driving the car and before I set off, it warned me there was a system update, much like I get on my iPhone. And I just said, yes, update it at 1 a.m. in the morning, making sure I wasn't going to be driving it. And then when I got in in the morning, there was a new feature, which is uh, hill start mode. So it basically, the car can tell when it's on a hill and makes it easier to pull away without falling backwards. Other car features include uh, some of these. So from here you can obviously turn on and off the traction control which I wouldn't recommend since it has quite a lot of power. Um, but there's things like adjusting the suspension. Uh, it'll happen slowly but you'll suddenly feel the car start to rise as it does now. There's also a creep mode which is also a new feature that was added this week. Uh, so just like a normal petrol automatic or a diesel automatic, the car will start to creep forward if you take your foot off the brake. There's also options for cold weather, so I might want to turn the driver's seat, uh, might want to heat it up up to level two or control the centre rear. Um, but I mean, really, a lot of these features don't really need much explanation. It's so intuitive and so easy to use that really you don't even need someone to really demo the car for you.
Unsurprisingly, the Tesla is just like any normal car to drive. Now, you might notice I'm on the left hand at the moment, but when they launch in the UK, there will be right hand drive. The only difference having a battery really does have is that it's sort of eerily quiet inside. And actually on the motorway, it makes for a much more pleasant drive than you'd have in a sort of noisy petrol or diesel car. And actually when you're in traffic, um, you can pull away from the lights pretty quickly. Being, having sort of a tray of batteries underneath uh, powering the wheels means that all of the power from those batteries can actually be sort of set loose onto the wheels all at once. So from 0 to 20, 30, there are a few things that will be as quick as this on four wheels. The other thing you'll notice is that uh, when I lift my foot off the gas, the car actually brakes a little bit. So here we go, we see the car starting to slow down. Now what it's doing there is using regenerative braking like you see in F1. So the sort of motion of braking the wheels is actually charging the batteries furthermore, eking out your range. Now you can actually just see your range all the time in the dash. Um, now we started off with a range of around 260 miles and over the weekend we've reduced that down to 100. Now I definitely haven't done 100 miles but this is how the kind of batteries react to your driving style. As you can see right now, I'm using 40 kilowatts, um, but really if I want to eke out a little bit more mileage, I can still maintain my speed of 40 miles per hour while only using just under 20 kilowatts. So actually over a while, the Tesla sort of shapes your driving style and you'll sort of drive more economically, and sort of more relaxed to get the full range out of the car. So as you can see, the charging point is at the back, so I've had to back the car up into the space so that we can connect it to these two charging points here. Um, so the first thing to do is to connect your plug to the car. So I'm gonna go grab the cable. So the car will come with these sockets. Um, now, if you buy your own Tesla, you can get a port like this one with this kind of socket fitted to your home. Uh, I think you just have to contact your energy company, whether it's Eon or EDF, and they'll install one of these ports. So you can do it at home. And uh, I'm told it costs around seven to eight pounds for a full charge, which will give you a range of about eight, uh, sorry, 280 miles. So let's plug this end in the car. So now on these charging points, you can actually use a Source West card because we're in Bristol, but there are different companies who have their own cards. I've actually used this uh, Charge Your Car app. So I'm gonna hit the Start Charge button on the charger here. And uh, now we wait for the signal to reach the charger. So now we plug in this end goes in there and we're waiting for the charging light and the light will now shift to blue which is charging before I spent some time with the Tesla Model S I had my doubts about battery powered cars now having tried to charge this around Bristol I still have my doubts you know a number of points weren't working and it wasn't always reliable. But that said, I don't have a point installed in my home and perhaps if I did, I'd be less worried. But the car itself, the idea of something being powered by something other than petrol, the Tesla proves that this can happen. It's a remarkable piece of machinery. Inside the software is um, far more intuitive, far more smart than anything I've ever driven and it can be updated. So once you've bought the car, this is the first machine that will actually appreciate and improve over time. This is definitely a machine that will change your point of view.